We physicists have waited a hundred years since 1916 for this photograph. It is a region black holes might just be one of the most fascinating and mysterious phenomena in the universe. They are massive beasts in terms of power, but at the same time virtually invisible to us. A black hole weighing perhaps two to four million times the mass of the sun. But because of the research that was put into them over the last couple of decades, we've gone from knowing absolutely nothing about them to getting to learn more and more up close and personal. And while things have just gotten crazier, Michio Kaku just announced that we've finally gotten a look at what's inside a black hole. And this new information brings light to the details the world of science might have missed all along. Join us as we deep deeper into black holes and unveil what's inside. Space is big bad. What are black holes? Before we get into the details of what Michio Kaku found, we have to talk about the firsts. Even though most of us have some idea what black holes are, there are still some gaps in the right information. You see, in 1916, Albert Einstein published his theory of general relativity, which predicted the existence of black holes. At that time, the concept of black holes was purely theoretical. It took another 50 years for the scientific community to find evidence that black holes actually exist. This happened in the 1960s. They were studying the Cygnus constellation when they noticed an oddly bright blue star that was emitting X-rays. This star wasn't a stagnant object but was going around a giant black something. Upon further investigation, it was found that the X-rays weren't just moving around on their own, but they were being sucked into the black thing they were orbiting, thus the name black hole. This discovery was significant because it provided proof that black holes actually exist and that were just a figment of Albert Einstein's wild imagination. While that was great, it also meant that there was this unreal entity in space that we urgently needed to know more about. So, researchers all around the world got to work. This black hole was named Cygnus X1, and it is located in the constellation Cygnus about 6,000 light years from Earth. And it was no small discovery. It's about 14 times brighter than the Sun and incredibly dense, which causes it to have a strong gravitational pull. The gravitational pull is so strong that not even light can escape it. This is why it is called a black hole. The concept of a black hole is both fascinating and terrifying. It is a region of space where gravity is so strong that nothing, not even light, can escape. Anything that gets too close to a black hole will be pulled into it, never to be seen again. But that aspect of danger makes it even more necessary to learn everything there is to know about them. Was this it? Or were we just beginning? The answer ended up being the latter. After the discovery of Cygnus X1, scientists started to search for other black holes. They found that there may be close to over 100 million black holes in the Milky Way alone. But because they are so incredibly hard to detect, we still don't have an exact number. Nevertheless, from the looks of it, there are several million black holes in the Milky Way in our very galaxy, which is what makes them even more important to study. So let's break it down. The main concern with black holes is always going to be gravity. Their gravitational pull is so intense that anything that enters it compresses down astronomically until it becomes a singularity. In simpler terms, black holes are like cosmic vacuum cleaners that suck everything in. One of the scariest parts about the research that's gone into black holes is the fact that if someone were to fall into one, they would get stretched to the point that they become a single line. This process would happen slowly, and the person would die before the final form actually sets in. So let's just say that no one should be stepping into one. But they're all over, so could we really be in danger? Despite the fact that the closest black hole to Earth is 1,500 light years away, it's still close enough to bring up questions and concerns. In 2021, scientists were able to release the first clear photograph of a black hole, specifically the M87 black hole. This black hole was photographed several nights in a row, and with each photograph, the researchers gathered more and more evidence about it. They had to stitch the individual photos together to create something that filled all the gaps. This way, they were able to figure out that there are three layers to a black hole. It's not just one single gaping hole of nothingness, as many people believe. Things are a lot more complicated than that. To even get to the nothing part of a black hole, you have to make it through the first two layers. The first layer is called the event horizon, which, while in the first layer, is the point of no return. Once you pass the event horizon, there's no turning back, and you will be sucked into the black hole. It only gets worse from there on out. The second layer is the photon sphere, 
which is the region where light orbits the black hole. Any light that enters this region will be trapped and will not be able to escape the black hole's gravitational pull. Finally, we come to the third layer, which is the singularity. This is where everything that enters the black hole gets compressed down astronomically until it becomes a singularity. The singularity is a point in space-time where the laws of physics as we know them break down, and we just can't predict what happens next. At the singularity, the density is infinite, and the laws of physics as we know them cease to exist. Now what makes all of this infinitely worse is the fact that every single black hole you study will be entirely different from the last. Sure, they do tend to follow the same three-layer concept, but the way they function could be vastly different. Now, if this were anything else, all we need to do is hop back on those telescopes and just study the problem at hand in detail. But with black holes, you can't really do that. Scientists can only study black holes indirectly by observing the radiation they emit and the gas and dust that surrounds them. Sending a probe like the Voyager inside a black hole is not possible because anything that enters the event horizon is pulled towards the singularity where it is compressed to an infinitely small point. So you can't exactly waste billions of dollars just to get a glimpse every time because the second the probe gets close enough, it'll just crush into nothingness. Because of that glaring problem, scientists are left with no option but to study these objects in a two-dimensional way, even though they are three-dimensional phenomena in reality. To make matters even more challenging, there are also the two problems of every black hole being unique and the laws of physics as we know them breaking down when we try to explore the inside. This means that the traditional methods of scientific inquiry don't really apply to the study of black holes. That doesn't mean that the researchers haven't been busy. There are lots of different theories and explanations of black holes, and with each one, things get more and more interesting. One of the most compelling theories about the formation of black holes is that they are created from collapsed stars. When a star exhausts all of its fuel, it can no longer produce enough energy to counteract the force of gravity that is constantly pulling inward. As a result, the star begins to collapse in on itself, becoming smaller and denser as it does so. If the star is massive enough, this process can continue until it becomes a singularity. To understand the nature of black holes in depth, NASA scientists turned their attention to the core of the galaxy M87. Astronomers observed a super-powerful whirlpool of super-hot hydrogen gas that was spinning at an astonishing rate of 1.12 million miles per hour. The sheer force of this spinning disk of gas should have caused it to violently fly apart in all directions, but it didn't. Scientists deduced that there had to be a colossal mass concentrated at the center of the galaxy to prevent this from happening. This massive object weighed as much as 2 to 3 billion suns and could only be a black hole. But that's not the only theory. Black holes spin. In 1963, the New Zealand mathematician Roy Kerr used Einstein's equations of gravity to provide the best description of spinning black holes. Kerr showed that a spinning black hole wouldn't collapse into a point as previously thought, but to a ring of fire or a thin disk. The disk would be spinning so rapidly that centrifugal forces would keep it from collapsing. This spinning disk of matter is called the ergosphere, and it is the region surrounding the black hole where the laws of physics start to break down. But the most intriguing feature of Kerr's solution was that it predicted the existence of an Einstein-Rosen bridge, also known as a wormhole. This is a theoretical passage through space-time that connects two separate regions of the universe or even two parallel universes. The idea is that if one were to fall into a black hole instead of being crushed to oblivion, one would be sucked down a tunnel through the ring of fire and shot out a white hole in a parallel universe. To understand how this works, we need to look at the concept of space-time. In Einstein's theory, space and time are not separate entities but are interconnected, forming a four-dimensional fabric called space-time. Objects with mass warp this fabric, creating a gravitational field that causes other objects to move towards them. Now imagine a sheet of paper representing space-time. If you place two points on the paper and draw a line between them, this is a representation of how objects move through space-time. But what if you could fold the paper in half and create a shortcut between the two points? This is essentially what a wormhole does. It creates a shortcut through space-time allowing for faster-than-light travel between two points in the universe or even between different universes. But let's not get carried away here. Despite the exciting possibilities presented by Kerr's solution, the existence of wormholes is purely theoretical at this point. 
We have no evidence that they actually exist or that they can be used for travel. But the idea of a wormhole raises intriguing questions about the nature of black holes and the possibilities they present. And while there might be a possible explanation, it still leaves a lot of questions unanswered, which is why another theory was introduced. This one was courtesy of Professor Leonard Suskind, who happens to be the father of string theory and the co-founder of holographic theory. The holographic theory proposes that the information contained within a black hole is not lost but is instead stored on its two-dimensional surface. This means that the information about everything that falls into a black hole is encoded on its event horizon, the boundary beyond which nothing can escape. Suskind's theory suggests that the universe itself may be a hologram, with everything we see and experience being a projection of information stored on a distant two-dimensional surface. This idea has profound implications for our understanding of the nature of reality and the fabric of space-time. Suskind's holographic theory has gained traction in the scientific community in recent years. It offers a way to reconcile the apparent loss of information in black holes with the principles of quantum mechanics, which state that information cannot be destroyed. In essence, Suskind's theories suggest that black holes are not the ultimate destroyers of information but rather the ultimate preservers. As fascinating as all these theories are, they still leave us with more questions than answers. The nature of black holes remains one of the greatest mysteries in the universe, and despite our best efforts, we are still far from understanding them fully. This is where the latest announcement from Michio Kaku comes into play. Michio Kaku is a theoretical physicist, futurist, and science communicator. He is a professor of theoretical physics at the City College of New York and the CUNY Graduate Center. He is known for his work in string theory and his efforts to popularize science through books, television shows, and public lectures. Kaku's latest announcement regarding black holes is groundbreaking. He suggests that we have finally gotten a look at what's inside a black hole. According to Kaku, the information that has been gathered over the years has allowed us to create a detailed model of the interior of a black hole. This model reveals that black holes are not just empty voids but contain a complex and dynamic structure. Kaku's model suggests that the interior of a black hole is filled with a dense superheated plasma that is constantly in motion. This plasma is created by the intense gravitational forces that compress matter to extreme densities and temperatures. The plasma is so dense that it emits high-energy radiation, which can be detected by telescopes. This new model also suggests that the singularity at the center of a black hole is not a point but rather a ring or a disk. This ring or disk is surrounded by a swirling mass of superheated plasma that is constantly in motion. The intense gravitational forces create a whirlpool effect that keeps the plasma in constant motion, preventing it from collapsing into the singularity. This new model has profound implications for our understanding of black holes. It suggests that they are not just cosmic vacuum cleaners that suck everything in but are dynamic and complex objects that have a lot more going on inside them than we previously thought. Kaku's announcement also raises intriguing questions about the nature of the universe and the fabric of space-time. If black holes contain a dynamic and complex structure, it suggests that the universe itself may be more dynamic and complex than we previously thought. It also raises questions about the nature of gravity and the fundamental forces that govern the universe. While Kaku's announcement is groundbreaking, it is important to note that it is still a theoretical model. We do not yet have direct evidence of the interior of a black hole, and much more research is needed to confirm these findings. Nevertheless, Kaku's model represents a significant step forward in our understanding of black holes and the mysteries they hold. In conclusion, the study of black holes has come a long way since Albert Einstein first predicted their existence in 1916. From the discovery of Cygnus X1 to the recent announcement by Michio Kaku, our understanding of black holes has grown by leaps and bounds. While we still have much to learn, the new models and theories that have emerged in recent years suggest that black holes are not just empty voids but dynamic and complex objects that hold the key to some of the greatest mysteries of the universe. As we continue to explore the cosmos and push the boundaries of our knowledge, we can look forward to more groundbreaking discoveries that will shed light on the nature of black holes and the fabric of space-time itself.